Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about digital infrared photography. Uh, when we talk about infrared photography, you're probably thinking military applications where you see these glowing figures running around in the night, you know, and gunships and on aircraft, or, or you're thinking of uh, the false color images where it's like blue and red and yellow and white and each color represents a different temperature. Uh, we're talking, I'm talking about fine art photography um, where you get images similar to this. Infrared photography has been around since uh, the film days. You used to be able to buy film like this. This is Kodak high-speed infrared film. Uh, they no longer make it. In fact, this roll right here expired back in 2007. I keep it around intending to shoot it one of these days. We'll see if I ever get around to it. Maybe I'll sell it. I think there's still a pretty good market for it as long as uh, you've kept it in the freezer. Um, the nice thing about digital, it's fully capable of shooting infrared film. Uh, infrared. The sensors are sensitive to both infrared, visible light, and UV. The manufacturer places a, what they call a hot mirror filter over the sensor and that uh, only allows visible light through. So it filters out the UV and it filters out the infrared. And, uh, and that gives you, and for general photography, that is ideal. Uh, some cameras will still allow a little bit of infrared light in there. And with those ones, you can shoot by buying a uh, infrared, just by buying an infrared filter to place it in front of the lens. Uh, this, the disadvantages with that is that you're going to have a, a very long exposure. So you can't, it's not really a carrying around setup. You have to have a tripod and it's normally in the seconds to, to I've heard minutes, but I haven't really looked it up lately. Um, the other option is you convert the camera to, to a dedicated infrared camera. And what you do is you remove that filter, the current filter that the manufacturer has placed, and you put a new one in. Now that requires some surgery and opening up the camera, disassembling it down to the sensor and removing it, and that might scare a lot of people. Uh, basically, I've, I've shot a time lapse of me doing the conversion on my Nikon D80, which you can see here. So I have to completely disassemble the camera, I go in, and you'll see the, uh, the infrared filter is the dark one. The non-infrared filter, or the normal manufacturer one, is kind of the light blue one. Now, after I did the conversion on my camera, the first image I shot looked like this. Now, after changing um, the white balance setting to a custom level, I was able to get pictures like this. Um, LifePixel has a little bit of a tutorial on how to do that but it'll vary per make and model of camera. The other thing you should be aware of when you're shooting infrared is that uh, infrared light focuses differently than visible light. So you usually have to focus, especially if you're trying to find focus onto a subject, focus a little bit in front of them. So if you're focusing on the eyes, you have to focus a little bit in front of the eyes if you have a very narrow depth of field. Um, the other strategy is just to use a different f-stop. Use an f-stop number that's a little bit wider, maybe a 5.6 or an 8, 11, um, and that'll give you a little bit wider depth of field so you don't have to be as accurate. The other thing is if your subject is a little bit further back, further away from the camera, then uh, that automatically widens your, your depth of field and you, and you don't have to worry about that as much. Um, now where you're thinking, hey, I want to do this, what's the cost, what, what are some of the options? Uh, my suggestion, especially if you're going to do it yourself, is find an old camera body used uh, and then convert that and then you have a dedicated infrared camera and your, your normal camera. Uh, I used an old Nikon D80 that I picked up. Um, now the filters themselves, they range around $200. Uh, I got mine at LifePixel. They seem to be a pretty reputable uh, manufacturer. They have, uh, and I think they're one of the more pioneering um, brands. They also have a lot of tutorials on their website how you can do the conversion yourself, which I find really handy. That's what I use as a reference. Um, if you do go with the LifePixel one, there's a reference program where 
if you refer somebody, then you get a little bit of money. So hey, if you, I'll, I'll put my reference information down below, and if you use it, I really appreciate it. But you know, no pressure. Um, otherwise, they'll do the installation for you. I think it's somewhere around four hundred dollars. Uh, I, I don't know if that means four hundred. You, you know, their prices are going to change, so you're going to have to look yourself. I'll have the link below. I'm also shooting some time-lapse infrared stuff. I'll be posting probably a longer video in the future, but here's a sample. The reason the trees and foliage turn white and the sky turns black is because uh, plants reflect a lot of infrared light. And so if you think of just visible light, if something reflects a lot of light, it's usually white. If it doesn't reflect very much light, it's black. So uh, trees reflect a lot of infrared, so they turn white. The sky, um, unless you're looking directly at the sun, uh, you're not getting a lot of infrared light. That's why the sky is blue. That's on the opposite end of the spectrum of infrared, uh, so that you're not getting a lot of infrared light coming in from the sky when you're not pointing towards the sun. So that's why the, the sky turns dark, which is great. You get some great contrast with the clouds. Um, also, uh, water tends to absorb a lot of infrared light, so that turn usually gets darker. Um, but it does reflect, you will get some reflection of infrared light, so don't, don't expect it to go away completely. Uh, people kind of get this kind of ghostly look, almost as if, to me, they look like uh, maybe they've, they've been, they're drowned. But uh, it's kind of a neat look. The nice thing is it removes a lot of blemishes, uh, and it makes them look a lot younger. So here's a couple shots of um, some people. Well, I hope this video is pretty helpful. Um, if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Uh, if you're into, want to see some more uh, videos about photography, uh, you know, please subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section or on my uh, channel. Uh, if you have any questions about future videos or you want uh, or you have uh, any requests for future videos, also leave those in the comment section or on my channel and I'll try to get around to it if I can. Uh, again, thank you and I hope this was helpful. Bye.